Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Brittany of BrittanyJJones.com. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome to the channel. I hope that you will like what you see and subscribe below for more. Please excuse me, I am a little bit under the weather, but I wanted to get this intro finished um, because this is the last part that I needed to do to finish my sew along for my new pattern, ME2063, my jumpsuit pattern, and I love this jumpsuit, and I hope that you all love it. I'm gonna be following along with view A in this video, but it's the same as view B. It's just a shorter length, so you can still follow along if you wanna make the longer view. Um, but yeah, I'm so excited. Y'all please tag me when you all make it and let's get started sewing. To begin, we're gonna start sewing on pattern piece number two. And what we're gonna do is pin and stitch along our center back seam. As you can see, I've gone ahead and finished off my route edges with my serger. So I finished off the center back seam, the shoulder seam, as well as underarm and the side seam here. I started to finish that off with my serger. I didn't do the hem of the sleeve just yet but I did go ahead and do the other seams. So with right sides facing, go ahead and grab your pins and let's start pinning them in my place. Make sure that you match up your notches along the center back. Once you have the center back seam pinned, we can go ahead and stitch at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now that we have our center back seam sewn, you wanna go ahead and press your seam open flat. And now I'm gonna grab my front pattern pieces. So here are my two fronts here. And with right sides facing, I'm going to pin at my shoulder seams and then we can stitch in place at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. So again, make sure that you have your seams right sides facing. I'm gonna go ahead and pin my other shoulder seam the same way, and then we can stitch again at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance right along our shoulder seams. Let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, now that we have our front and back sewn together along the shoulder seam, so here's my seams here. Now we can go ahead and sew them together right sides facing at our underarm. Right sides facing, we are gonna stitch our underarm seam together. So go ahead and grab your pins and start to pin in place. Okay, I have my underarm seams sewn. You can stitch over your same stitching to do some reinforcing here along this curve. Once you have it sewn, let's go ahead and do a few clips right into this curve here like so that's plenty i'm going to do the same thing on the other side the clips help because if we don't clip it's going to show you it could kind of pull here in this area you see that pool that's happening so on this side where i've already clipped it's not pulling as much as this side is here without the clips so that is why we clip into curves is so it can kind of release the fabric and spread out a little bit and so that is what needs to happen here because if not, you see how it's pulling. And over here with the few clips that we placed, it's already laying nicer. We just need to give it a press. So definitely make sure that you clip into those curves so that it can release the fabric and allow it to spread and give. Don't clip through your stitching line, just clip up to it. Just adding a few clips here. And so now, once you have that done, you can go to the ironing board and go ahead and give that a press. Now that you have sewn your underarm seam, you've gone ahead and given it a press. The next thing for us to do is to finish up the hem on our sleeve. So the hem allowance for our sleeve is an inch and a quarter. So you can either one, fold up a quarter like so, and then fold up the inch and stitch it in place. So on the inside, it will look like this. Fold up a quarter and then fold up an inch. Obviously, you will get exact measurements, but it would look like this if you fold up the quarter. Or you can decide to just finish off your raw edge with your serger and just fold up the hem allowance and then stitch it in place. So however you want to finish off your sleeve, let's go ahead and do it now. And then I also went ahead and did some stay stitching along the neckline edge. Just start here at this dot. You should have two dots, but this one here that's further inside and close to the notch, start there and just do one row of stay stitching all the way along the neckline. The stay stitching is done at one eighth of an inch seam allowance. I usually just do like a quarter of an inch seam allowance, 
Once you have that done, let's start to work on the collar. Before we start sewing on the collar, I do want to point out something here in the instructions. So at step seven, we sew the back seam of the under collar. And at step eight, it has us reinforcing at the small dots on the under collar. This should be the upper collar, not the under collar. So there's the seam for the under collar, but here is what we need. We need it to be on the upper collar. So again, do not do reinforcing and clip to your circles on the under collar. You need to do the reinforcing and clip to your circles on the upper collar. Let's continue. To begin working on our collars, we wanna go ahead and stitch pattern piece number four. This is our under collar. Go ahead and sew along the center seam of that. So I've gone ahead and I've stitched mine. So again, go ahead and stitch yours at a 5 8 of inch seam allowance. And then we could put this to the side because like I mentioned previously, we are not going to be reinforcing the under collar. We need to reinforce and clip on the upper collar. So go ahead and grab your upper collar. You should have also went ahead and fused interfacing to your collar pieces. I'm gonna trim just this little bit of excess here off of the top. So now at these two dots along your upper collar, the one that does not have the center seam, we're going to do some reinforcing here. So I'm just gonna stitch right through my small dots, maybe about a half an inch on both sides. Again, I'm just gonna stitch right through the dot to reinforce it, and then we can clip to the dot. But first, let's go ahead and do a reinforced stitch right across those small dots. Okay, I've gone ahead and done my reinforcing stitches here. So I'm just gonna clip to the small circles. And now we can go to the pressing station and we can press a 5 8 of an inch on this middle portion here where we just clipped. So after you reinforce, clip to your small dots and then we can press under 5 8 of an inch. Once you have it pressed up, we can go ahead and trim this down to 3 8 of an inch. Now that we have it trimmed, let's go ahead and grab our under collar and we are gonna place these right sides facing. We're gonna be matching up our notches and stitching here along the sides and the lower portion of the collar. So let's match up our dots, match up our notches, and let's go ahead and pin in place. Okay, we're gonna be stitching at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. We're gonna begin up here. Make sure that you back stitch. You can pivot once you get to this dot. Stitch down, pivot, and then go back up, back stitch at the end. Let's go ahead and stitch our collars together now. Okay, once we have it sewn, let's go ahead and trim our seams. Now that we have it sewn, now we wanna go ahead and do some understitching. And you want to do understitching on your under collar. Make sure that you're not doing understitching on your upper collar. It needs to be on the under collar, the one that has the seam. So with understitching, you wanna make sure that you have your seam allowance going toward your under collar. So make sure that it is going toward the under collar and we are gonna stitch really close to this edge. Again, make sure that you are stitching on your under collar not your upper collar. Now that we have it sewn, let's go ahead and baste the raw edges together. We can keep this portion here free, but let's just baste these raw edges here together on the collar. Once you have the raw edges basted together, now we can go ahead and pin it onto the neckline. So I'm gonna match up my center back seam here with the seam on the back of my bodice. Pin that in place. And now you can go ahead and match up your notches as well as your small dots and continue pinning. Okay, now as you have your collar pinned on, let's go ahead and baste it in place. Okay, I have my collar basted on and this is what it looks like along the back. Just get away, trim away my loose threads here. So again, make sure that you have your understitching on the under collar, not on the upper collar. And when you did your basting stitch, you should not have captured in this folded edge. This should still be free. We were only sewing this portion here, so make sure that you did not baste this folded edge into the collar when you just did your stitch. 
Once you have it basted, let's start working on the facing. For our facing, you wanna go ahead and finish off this inner edge of your facing here. I have finished off my edge with my serger. I also finished off the shoulder edge of my facing as well. The instruction does have us to fold under 5 eighths of an inch and then trim it down to 3 eighths of an inch. So I will do that, but I just went ahead and finished it off. It's not necessary because again, you will have to fold this under and trim it off. But I did go ahead and finish off the inner edge. I also did stay stitching along the neck edge of the facing here. Stay stitching again is done at an eighth of an inch for this pattern. I did mine at about a quarter of an inch. So you can see I stopped right here by this large dot and I just did my stay stitching along both of the neck edges of the facing. Along your right facing piece, not the left, we don't need it on the left, only on the right. And if you're not quite sure which is which, you can take a look at step 14 and just make sure that you have your pattern piece lined up exactly like it's showing on the illustration. You wanna go ahead and make your buttonholes along your facing now. Once you have that done, let's go ahead and pin our facings onto the front. And I'm gonna line this up right sides facing. So, like so i'm just going to place this over and i'm going to start matching up my notches and i'm just going to pin the facing in place first okay so i have one facing pinned on so you want to make sure again that you pin yours on the same way matching up your circles as well as your notches and so up here along the shoulder edge of my facing where i said i finished it off i just folded in that finished edge so that is what i did for mine so now let's go ahead and pin the other the same way and then we can go ahead and stitch in place. Once you have it all pinned, let's go ahead and stitch in a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance. So we're gonna be stitching up here. We're gonna pivot across and just continue on all the way to the other side to the end of the facing. So let's go ahead and stitch it all in place now. And again, you can see I did fold up the corner edges of the facing. Okay, now that you have your facing sewn onto your collar, let's go ahead and trim our seams. I do recommend before trimming that you do take a look at your collar and make sure everything is nice and smooth before we start doing trimming, just in case you need to go back in and make some adjustments. But once you're happy with everything, let's go ahead and trim. Okay, now up here around our neckline edge, we need to clip right here where we have reinforced and we have this small circle we need to clip right through there same thing on the other side so what that clip does is it allows us to push up the seam allowance here along the center back and then we're able to bring that pressed edge over and we'll be able to stitch that close now this portion here i'm just going to clean this up right here so now that we have this clip, we can go to the ironing board and just press up this seam here. We can trim down the seam allowance as well, but once you have it pressed, we'll be able to bring that folded pressed edge over the seam, and then we'll be able to either slip stitch or stitch close to this pressed edge on the swan machine. And then for the shoulder edge on our facing, we will fold this over and we would just slip stitch that closed. So let's go ahead and press everything, and then we can start slip stitching and finishing off the seams. Okay, I have done my slip stitching. So I've slip stitched down the shoulder area here at the facing as well as the neck edge here. The next thing that we want to do is do some under stitching along the front. So make sure that you're not under stitching toward your facing, which is what we would commonly do. But just take a look, if we were to be wearing this and you have it folded over like so, you don't want your under stitching to be showing on your facing. You want it to be along the front. So that is what we're gonna do. We're gonna start under stitching from the top down to the double notches that we transferred. If you can't see your notches because maybe you've trimmed them off, just grab your pattern piece and place it back down. Or you could just put a marker like a pen on where you need to stop. So I'm just going to do some under stitching along the front, not the facing, from the top down to the double notch. So again, just think about wearing the garment, how it's gonna fold over. You wanna make sure that you do not have the under stitching along the top, but just along the back on the front. Let's go ahead and do that now. All right, after you have your under stitching done along your facing, we can go ahead and put this to the side, start to work on the pants. 
To get started on our pants, I'm gonna be again making the short version, but the instructions are still the same. The first thing that we're gonna do is grab pattern piece number six and pattern piece number seven. I'm gonna lay pattern piece number seven, which is the pocket facing. I'm gonna lay it right sides facing to the front of the pant. So I'm gonna grab some pins. You should have transferred some markings as well as a notch. I'm gonna match up my notch here and I'm gonna pin in place. Okay, we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're gonna stitch in a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance. We're gonna begin stitching up here at the top. We're gonna stitch all the way down till we get to this circle here. Once we get to this dot, we're going to pivot and stitch across. So again, we're gonna start here, we're gonna stitch down. Once we get to this dot, we're gonna pivot and stitch across. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, now that we have it sewn, I'm gonna clip diagonally to this small dot here. Clip to the stitching, do not clip through the stitching. Once you have it clipped, now we can trim down this seam allowance. Now we can go ahead and turn the pocket toward the inside and give it a press. For this side right here, once you turn it in, it should kind of have, it's kind of angled on it here. So just make sure that you push out the seam allowance there so it looks like this. Let's go ahead and give it a press. Once we have it pressed, we can go ahead and do some top stitching right here along this edge. And once you get down here, we are gonna pivot and then continue the top stitch. So let's go ahead and do our top stitching now. Okay, once we have our top stitching done, now we can go ahead and grab pattern piece number eight. This is our side front as well as our pocket. And I am going to flip it like this so we can see. So with right sides facing, I'm gonna take the right side of my pocket and I'm gonna place it down here, right along the pocket facing and match everything up, match up my notches and then pin in place. Okay, once you have it pinned, we can go to the sewing machine. We're gonna be stitching in a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance all the way along this curved edge. And once you have it sewn, we can go ahead and finish off the raw edges. And then you just want to base your raw edges here along the top, as well as along the side, just to hold everything together. But first, let's go ahead and stitch and finish off our raw edges. Okay, I have the pockets sewn on, and I have finished off the raw edge with my serger. I've gone ahead and pinned the raw edges together here along the top of the pocket and the side, and I'm just gonna base this together to hold it in place. Okay, now that I have this pocket here done, make sure that you do your pocket for your other side as well, following along with those same steps. And as you can see, I've finished off the raw edges of my front here along the center seam, as well as the inner leg seam. I'm gonna go ahead and finish off this raw edge the same way. Okay, I have my raw edges finished, so I'm just going to gonna lay my fronts right sides facing and you should have transferred your markings. I have a large dot here. I'm gonna pin and match that up along the front. And you should have also transferred a notch right here along the center front. I am gonna pin there. Now I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and I'm gonna stitch right here between the large dot and this notch. So let's go ahead and do a stitch here at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, I have stitched between the large circle and the notch. Next, on our left front, we need to fold in along the fold line along the front. And if you're not quite sure where that marking is, you can pull out your pattern. I placed a snip here at the top. So I'm just gonna fold in along that fold line on the left, and I'm going to give that a press. So let's go ahead and fold in now and give it a press. Okay, I have pressed in along the fold line here on the left side. So this is what that looks like. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my zipper. So here's the zipper here that I'm gonna be installing. We are going to place it right up under this folded edge here. You want the pressed edge of your fabric to be right alongside the zipper teeth. And you want to place your zipper stop down here at the small dot. So again, after you have your left edge pressed in along the fold line, we're gonna take that pressed edge and place it right beside the zipper teeth of your zipper, making sure that you have your zipper facing up. And we can go ahead and pin this in place. Once you have it pinned, let's go ahead and do a basting stitch to hold this in place. Okay, now that we have it basted, and now we're gonna go ahead and grab 
pattern piece number 10, you should have gone ahead and fused the reusable interface into it. So with right sides facing, we're gonna fold it together and we're gonna stitch around the lower edge here at a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance. So let's go ahead and stitch that now. Okay, I went ahead and stitched along the lower edge and then I flipped it right side out. Once I flipped it right side out, I went ahead and just surged the raw edges together. I'm gonna grab a needle and kind of thread in this loose serger thread here. All right, so I have my fly all prepped and ready to go. I am going to take the fly and working on the left side where we just basted the zipper, I am going to match this up here, matching up the small dot as well as the notches and I'm going to pin this in place. So once you have it pinned, we can go ahead and baste. We can follow along with the same basting stitch or if you prefer and if you have installed zippers a couple times, you can just go ahead and do your permanent stitch now following along with the basting stitch. The basting stitch just allows you to put everything in place and then double check to make sure things are lined up as they should be. But again, you can go ahead and just do your permanent stitch now, but let's go ahead and baste or permanent stitch this following along with the same basting stitch that we previously did. Okay, now that we have the fly sewn on, I went ahead and stitched mine in place using my permanent stitch. But if you did decide to baste it in place first, once you're happy with the placement and everything looks good, you can go ahead and just stitch right over your same basting stitch using your regular machine stitch. Next, we're gonna go ahead and grab our fly pattern piece. And again, you want to fuse interface into that. As you can see, I have finished off the unnotched edge with my serger. And so with right sides facing, we are now gonna place this along the right front. You want to match up your notches as well as your circles and pin in place. Once we have it pinned, we can go ahead and stitch and make sure that we stop at the large dot. Let's go ahead and stitch this in place using a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once you have your fly sewn on, we can go ahead and trim down this seam and then do under stitching on our fly. So you wanna make sure that you have your seam allowance facing the fly and you just want to do some under stitching. Okay, now that we have the fly sewn, I've done my understitching and I've just pressed it toward the inside. Now we're just gonna lap the right over the left like so. It should fall nicely without any pulling or tugging needing to happen. Next, what we're gonna do is do a basting stitch right here along this pressed edge. The reason why we're doing a basting stitch along this pressed edge here is because once we finish on the inside here, we know that our fly and everything is gonna be nice and neat along the outside because we've already basted it in place. So this is optional, you don't have to do this, but I am because I like knowing that once I have everything sewn down and secure, that the right side of my fly is just gonna lay nice and neatly. So I am just placing a few pins here. And I'm gonna go to the sewing machine. You can base this in place by hand, or you can base it in place with your sewing machine, whatever works best for you. It is a little tricky since we're right here by this zipper, but just do your best, again, if you want to base it in place, and you can base it in place by hand again. Okay, I went ahead and did a basting stitch here. I did it by hand because like I said, it's kind of tricky when you do it on the sewing machine. So along the inside here, we're gonna move the fly facing back and we just want to pin this portion of the zipper to the fly. So I'm gonna grab my pins here and start to pin in place. And again, we're just pinning the fly to the zipper tape. We don't want it to go through the front of the pant, just the fly in the zipper tape. If it helps, you can pin the facing out of the way so it's not in the way while you're sewing. You can just pin that back. Once you have it pinned in place, go ahead and put on your zipper foot and we're gonna stitch right down the center of this zipper tape to secure it. So let's go ahead and do that stitch down. Okay, after we have it sewn, we can go ahead and remove the pin. I'm gonna turn it onto the right side. 
Before I remove my basting, I'm gonna go ahead and do my stitch along the stitching line. If you do not have your markings, you can go ahead and put your pattern piece down and just go ahead and transfer your stitching line right here along the right side. Okay, I've gone ahead and transferred my stitching line here. So I'm just gonna go to the sewing machine and I'm gonna stitch through all layers, which make sure that you don't have your fly facing in the way. It should only be your fly in your front that you're sewing. So let's go ahead and stitch along our stitching line now. Okay, I have stitched along my stitching line here so I can hold it up so you all can see. I've done my stitch right here along my stitching line. So this is what the inside looks like here. I'm going to just clean it up a little bit and clip away some of my loose threads. Okay, after you've cleaned it up, next you wanna go ahead and tack your facing to your fly facing here. You can just grab a needle and thread and just do a quick tack only on the fly and the facing it. You don't need to stitch through your front. So once you have that secure, if you have an extended zipper, you can then go ahead and trim that off. I'm just gonna go ahead and do a quick little back stitch here a few times just to secure them in place and then we can move on to the next step. Okay, so I just did a quick little tack down here on my machine. Again, you can do it by hand. And now I'm gonna go ahead and remove my basting stitch. And now I have a really nice clean fly. This is what it looks like, unzip the zipper. So now we can go ahead and move on to the next step and that's gonna be grabbing our back pieces. Go ahead and grab your back pants pieces. Okay, with right sides facing, we're gonna go ahead and lay our front and back pieces this together and we're gonna pin at the inner leg seam and stitch there first. As you can see, I've gone ahead and finished off the edges of my back pattern pieces. So I'm just gonna line everything up, match up my notches and start to pin in place. Once you have them pinned, we can go ahead and stitch at a 5 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now that you have your inner leg seams sewn, you wanna go ahead and give them a press. I've given mine a press here. And so now with right sides facing, we are gonna continue stitching our center seam. So I'm gonna grab some pins. I'm gonna pin here first, right at the inner leg seams. And again, make sure that everything is right sides facing and we can continue pinning the center seam. Okay, once you have it pinned, we can go to the sewing machine and we're gonna stitch in a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. You should begin right here where we left off at, at our previous stitch. So start there where we stitch between the dot and the notch. Start there and just continue stitching. After you have that stitch, then you just want to add a little bit of reinforcing and stability right here along the center. You can do another stitch right along the curve at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So let's go ahead and do our 5 8 of an inch seam allowance first, and then right along the curve just to strengthen your seam and add some stability, you can do a quarter of an inch stitch. Let's do those now. Okay, once you have your center seam sewn, and you can see here, I went back and did another stitch at a quarter of an inch just to add a little bit of reinforcing. Now we can go ahead and turn our pants right sides facing and we can stitch the side seams together. So go ahead and grab your pins, match up your notches, and then stitch at a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance on your side seams. Let's go ahead and stitch our side seams in place now. Okay, I've gone ahead and pressed my seams open here along the sides like so, now that I have them sewn. So next we can go ahead and attach our bodice to our pants. So with right sides facing, I'm gonna first line up my center back seam. I'm gonna pin there. Make sure that is matching. Now I'm gonna start matching up my notches as well as my side seams. And pin in place. So just continue matching up your notches and your side seams as well as your markings. Match everything up and go ahead and pin in place. Okay, I have my bodice pinned onto my pants. 
I've matched up my notches as well as my circles. And so one thing to note is that your pants is not gonna meet all the way here. What's gonna happen is we're gonna fold this back onto itself like so. And even when we fold it back, there's still gonna be slack here because this is gonna poke out at the end. It's gonna look like that once it's sewn up and finished. So don't think that you have to come all the way to the edge with your pants to match here, you do not. Once you have everything matched up and pinned, let's go ahead and baste it in place. So now that we have it basted, we're gonna take our facing and fold it onto itself. So we're just gonna fold it backward like so. We're gonna match up our notches. You should have transferred notches, match those notches up, and then go ahead and pin in place. So again, you should just be folding it onto itself. Make sure that you have that seam allowance going back with the facing. You don't want it going forward. It should be folding back, back with the facing. Pin here. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side the same exact way. Fold your facing toward the inside. Find your notches and let's match those up. Pin in place. All right, once we have them pinned, we can go ahead and stitch in place. I'm gonna stitch right along this basting stitch that we did. I'm just gonna continue that stitch. And then we wanna continue stitching along the basting stitch to secure our bodice to our pants. So let's go ahead and stitch all the way along the waist seam, following along with that basting stitch at a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, after we have it sewn, let's go ahead and flip everything up and just take a look at how our seams look. You can push out your corners here. So this is what we should be looking like. You can go ahead and remove your basting stitch as well. I'm gonna fold out the other side here as well. I haven't done any trimming yet because I just wanna take a look and make sure everything is falling nicely and looking clean. So this is the inside of the garment here. Before we tack this together, I want to do a little bit of trimming. Now, depending on the weight of your fabric, you may want to trim down your bodice seam allowance because what we're gonna do is we are going to fold up the seam allowance toward the bodice and then we're gonna stitch it close to the edge. So if you have like a heavy weight fabric, you may want to reduce some of the bulk by trimming down your seam allowance on the bodice only, not the pants seam allowance, the bodice seam allowance. If you want to trim some of this down so when we do press it up and stitch, it's not so bulky, you can do that. I am actually going to trim down some of this seam allowance. After I have it trimmed, I'm gonna go to my serger and I'm just gonna serge to finish off this raw edge. Cause what's gonna happen is once we press it up, you'll have a raw edge here if you don't go ahead and finish it. It's not enough fabric for us to fold in a quarter of an inch and press it down to install the elastic. So I am going to trim down a little bit of the bodice, seam allowance only, and then I'm gonna go to my serger and I'm gonna start over here at the beginning and just finish off the whole entire edge, making sure that I catch in the bottom here and just finish off the entire edge. So that way, once we press it up, we have a clean finish here. Let's go ahead and do that now. First, I'm gonna trim and I'm only trimming along the back. We don't need to trim the front. Along the back is where we're gonna be installing elastic. So let's go ahead and just trim a little bit. So I'm just gonna trim away some of that. So this is what it's looking like now. I'm just trimming away the bodice seam allowance only, not the back seam allowance. Okay, so this is what it looks like after I have trimmed. Again, I trimmed down only the bodice seam allowance. Now I'm gonna go ahead and finish off my route edge with the serger and I can press my seam going up toward the bodice. Okay, so I've gone ahead and finished off the seam with my serger and so I'm just gonna trim the corners here. So for this portion, the bodice portions, I trimmed, but along the back where we are gonna be folding that up, I didn't trim anything off. We need all that seam allowance. I only finished the seam allowance here along the back. You don't want to trim down the seam allowance. So here's again, the portion that I trimmed down and I just finished off the edge, but I did take a little excess off from the front. So this is how that looks. I'm just gonna clean up the threads and I wanna trim this corner right here. So that pokes out nice and clean. 
Same thing for this corner. And again, you probably want to go in and remove your basting. All right, so once you have yours turned in like so, you want to go ahead and press your seam going up toward your bodice because we're gonna insert elastic along the back only. It doesn't need to go into the front. So I'm gonna start at one seam allowance and I'm gonna stitch close to this finished edge here. I'm gonna go all the way around to the other side seam and I'm gonna back stitch. So again, it's only on the back portion. The elastic does not come onto the front. So the back only from seam allowance to seam allowance, you wanna go ahead and stitch Press your seam going up and stitch close to the raw edge or the finished edge if you finish yours to create the casing for the elastic. Let's go ahead and stitch it now. Okay, now that we have stitched our seam going up toward the bodice, here's a look at how it should be looking along the back. So you can see here, this is the back and I started and stopped at my side seams here. So this is the stitch going all the way along the back. Now let's install the elastic. You want to go ahead and cut a piece of elastic the length of pattern piece 13. I have my pin here. I'm just gonna put it on one end and I'm just gonna start to put it through the casing. So I'm gonna start on one of the side seams here and I'm just gonna feed the elastic in. All right, once you have your elastic pulled through, you want to go ahead and just hold it in place with the pin. I've already secured this side here, but for this one, let's secure it together. What you want to do is hold on to your elastic. If you want, you can kind of try on your jumpsuit to kind of see if you want to pull a little bit more um, so that it gathers in along the back. If you're happy with it though, we can head to the sewing machine and we just want to stitch through all thicknesses right along this seam, making sure that we secure the elastic. So this is what it looks like along this side here. You can see I've already secured the elastic and I stitched it right in this seam here. So this is what we want. I need to just clean up my threads, but just go ahead and secure the elastic right along the seam. Let's go ahead and do it for this side now. All right, I have my elastic secured along the back. This is what that looks like now. Next, you wanna go ahead and tack down your front facing to your waist seam. So you can do it by hand or I did mine by machine. You probably can barely see it, but I just went back and forth a few times here just to tack the front facing to the waist seam only. So it's nice and clean along the outside. I only tacked it to the waist seam and the facing right here along the edge. Again, you can do it by hand or you can do a couple back stitches here, front and back stitches here on your sewing machine. Go ahead and do that for both front facings. Next, you can go ahead and give everything a really good press and attach your buttons. Go ahead and lap your right over your left and now we can transfer our button markings. So you can get your pattern piece back out if your markings have disappeared, but you just want to transfer your button markings and go ahead and apply those. You should have purchased two buttons and they're just lap over and they sew on to the left. So again, go ahead and transfer your button markings and then you can apply and sew on your buttons onto your left. After you have that done, we can go ahead and do the hem of our pants or shorts, depending on which view you made. I did my hem a little bit shorter than the hem allowance just for comfort. I don't like things to be too short, but you can have the full seam allowance hem, which is an inch and a quarter, or you can make yours even thicker and probably do two inches. If you like a more chunkier hem, the choice is up to you. But you want to do your hem the same way that you did for your sleeve hem. I went ahead and finished off my raw edge. I folded up 5 eighths of an inch and I just stitched it in place. Once you have your buttons applied and you have done your hem, let's start to work on the sash. For the sash, you want to sew the centers together, matching up the seam allowance. Sew your center seam together and then go ahead and press that out flat like I've done here. And now with right sides facing, I'm going to fold the sash in half like so. I'm gonna grab some pins and I'm going to pin here in the center. And I'm gonna pin down both sides of the sash. On one of the sides though, we need to make sure that we leave an opening so that we can turn it right side out. And I'm just gonna place a pin horizontal here. This is gonna remind me to keep this portion open so I can flip it right side out. 
But once you have identified where you're gonna leave the opening at, you can just continue pinning your sash together right sides facing. All right, once you have your sash pinned, we can go ahead and stitch it in a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. So you can start here on one end, back stitch at the beginning, pivot once you get to the corner, and stitch all the way down, again, at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once you get to your opening, you wanna back stitch here, leave this open, start back stitching here, and then continue stitching down the other side of the sash. Let's go ahead and sew it now. Okay, once you have your sash sewn, you wanna go ahead and trim down your seam. I've trimmed mine. And so at the opening that we left, I'm just going to start to turn my sash right side out. All right, after you have it turned right side out, we can go ahead and give it a press. And then once you have it pressed for this opening here, you can either slip stitch it closed or you can do an edge stitch, a really close edge stitch to the edge to go ahead and close up the opening. So again, let's go ahead and press it and then you can slip stitch it closed or do an edge stitch right here along the edge to close up the opening. Okay, I have my sash sewn and I've gone ahead and I did an edge stitch on mine instead of slip stitching, but you may have slip stitched yours. Whatever you did, go ahead and finish your sash. And now we can go ahead and create some thread chain loops for our sash to go through along the side seam. All right, to do our thread chain loop, you wanna go ahead and grab a needle and thread. And I have it double threaded here for my needle. I have a knot on the end. I'm gonna begin starting at the top marking here and to do that I'm going to come to the inside of the garment and I'm going to come up right out of that marking so let me try to get in here to find it okay so I just came up right out of the marking here and I'm just going to pull the thread through now I'm going to show you the way that I learned and I watched a video from Erica Bunker a couple years ago and ever since I watched that video this is how I do my thread uh, chain loops. Um, there are different ways to do this so if this one's confusing I do encourage you to just search uh, for another method but this is how I like to do it. I will say in Erica Bunker's video she had four pieces of thread not just two just to provide some extra stability and I think probably to give it a nice thicker look. Um, I'm only using two but Again, if you wanna use four for more stability and for a more thicker thread chain, you can do that. I will link below her video in case you wanna watch that as well. So I brought it through here. If you want to add a more secure stitch, you can take it back through and come back up again. So that's what I'm gonna do just to make it a little bit more secure since again, I'm only using two pieces of thread for this. So I'm just gonna bring it back through here. and I'm gonna take it back up. Again, I just wanted to add a little bit of stability to the stitch. So just take it right back through the opening, like so. And now we can go ahead and start the thread chain loop. To start it, I'm just gonna grab a few threads here, almost as if you were gonna kinda of tie off a knot on your thread. And so what I'm gonna do is, before I pull this completely through, I'm gonna hold on to this loop. So as you can see, I did not pull it completely through. I'm holding on to the loop. So now what I'm gonna do is reach through here, grab this piece of thread. I'm not gonna let it go. And I'm just gonna kind of pull it down till it creates a knot down here. So that is the motion that I'm doing. As you can see, the thread isn't lifting back up. I've created a knot, it's stuck down here. So we're gonna repeat that same motion until we have a chain that's the length that we need for the sash to pass through. So again, I'm not pulling this through. I'm still holding it here. You're just reaching through, pulling it, but not letting go. And you're just pushing that knot down so it kind of piles on top of the previous knot. And continue. Pull the knot so that it kind of locks in down here. We kind of see how they're locking in. That's what we're doing. So I'm just gonna pull through and make sure that it locks down. Pull through, make sure that it locks. And continue. So again, my needle is still over here. You all see the needle just kind of hanging out. Let that stay over there. We're just doing this little kind of motion here with our fingers to create the thread chain. 
I really hope that you all can see this. It may be a little difficult to see and I apologize. Let's see if it, how it looks if I do it this way. Oh, that may be better. Okay, cool. So let's just grab through and continue. Don't put too much stress on this though, pulling it. You don't want to stress your uh, thread tail out the beginning of it though. You don't want to accidentally pull out pieces of your thread, of your fabric, but just continue with the thread chain loop. Did you see the motion here? Pulling the thread through, not letting go of anything. I'm not letting go of any thread. It's just a continuous little motion here. Once you find your rhythm, you can knock this out really quickly. And as you can see, you do wanna make sure that you have enough thread for this. Do not start this off with a little bit of thread. So I'm just gonna measure again. I'm gonna do a few more. I'm already at my marking, but I'm just gonna do a few more so that it's a little, it's a little slack in the loop and the belt isn't as tight. So I'm happy with that. So this is where I am now on my thread chain loop. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna fully pull this piece through to lock it. If you just let this loop go and you pull this way, your whole loop is gonna unravel. We need to bring this thread through to kind of finish off the knot. So tie that down, your knot is secure, and now we just want to secure it to the bodice. So at our second marking, I'm just gonna push my thread, my needle through. And on the inside here, I'm just gonna create a knot to secure the thread chain loop. So this is what the thread chain looks like along the outside. So now let me grab the sash. And you have these really beautiful thread chains here along the side holding your sash in place. I am so excited about this jumpsuit. I hope that you all love it. Once you have your thread chain loops complete, you are all done with my new pattern, Know Me ME2063. Well, that is all for the video. I hope that you all have enjoyed it. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on your notifications so you know when the next video goes live. I'm going to go sip on me some tea and get back in bed. And I'll see you all in the next video. Blessings, everyone. Bye.